Welcome to the Researcher YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to model using only Modelica components a very simplified version of contact. It is a very challenging topic, but I will use the example of this small ball that I use for playing with my cat freeway. This is the complete cat ball model. I will create a new model, cat ball 2, where I will show you step by step how to do it. The first thing we need to do, since we are working on a 3D environment, we need to use the multibody library. For doing so, we will need a world component that will give us gravity and a body. In this case, it will be my little ball. Next, I will show you the parameters I'm using for defining a small little ball. I'm using a small mass of, let's say, 50 grams. And I'm giving the sphere that we will use for the visualization a very small diameter, let's say 5 centimeters. Next, I'm including this component, free motion. This allows our body to move with six degrees of freedom. We can achieve that without this component as well, but you will see why I'm using it. There. Once I have connected all the components, I need to show you the free motion component. So, I'm using an initial height for the ball, like I'm doing in the video. I'm giving it 10 centimeters, nothing very big. And I'm initializing with zero initial velocities, as I'm dropping the ball and I'm having the angles and angular velocities fixed. All the other things you can leave as they are. I have to mention, however, that you will need to write some part of the code yourself, since you need to use it. I will copy-paste the code to go faster. And now I can validate. Let's run it with animation to see what happens. Here we have our little ball and we can run it to see what happens. So as expected the ball is falling without any kind of constraint. So back with our model we need to somehow model the contact be between the surface and the body. First of all, we need to know somehow the position of the of the body. For doing so, I will use this sensor, the relative position sensor. We need to pay attention to the frame A and B. Let's check how it's connected over here. So B goes with B and A goes with A. The only parameter that we can find inside is resolve in frame. And we need to be sure that we are choosing world. So we connect B with B and 
A with A. And here we select world. We can validate, check that everything is correct. Okay, perfect. So we need to use the output of the sensor. So for the contact, I'm going to use the one dimensional translational library. It is one of my favorite libraries in the Modelica standard library, so I really recommend you to become familiar with it. So, as I said, we need to use the position source. So I will add it to the model. I'm gonna flip it here. And if you see the coordinate system in the world, we see that we need the vertical component, which is Y, being it the second position of the vector. So be sure that you choose two. Okay. Now, I will use the last gap component to model the contact. But first, we need some kind of surface. So I will use the component fixed. As you can see, even the icon looks like a surface. So then, as I said, we need the elastogap component. Let me go back to the main model to see how we need to connect it. So as you can see, we have a gap between what looks like two surfaces. So you can understand and relate easily to what the component does. So you can see that we have a surface down here that will become in contact with this other one here. Bodies in the in general can be modeled their deformation as the springs and dampers. So that's why I think this component is actually very useful. So I'm gonna double click on it and see how it's defined. We have some spring constant, some damping constant, and the unstretched spring length. Perfect. So we have the parameters already defined. Now, since the one dimensional library, as you can see, the connectors are different from the multi body ones, we cannot connect them directly. What we will do is use this force sensor and we will read the resultant force of the contact and fit it to a world force component. So first we need to add the force sensor. Again, check how it is connected. important because we could get uh, a sign that it's different from what we expect. And next we add the world force component. We will be using only the force on the y direction. That's why I have the force in x and the force in, in z components equal to zero.
will add the components here very fast. Again, pay attention to the vector here. Force in X needs to be 1. Force in Z needs to be 3. And last but not least, the force in the Y component, as you are guessing, needs to be 2. We will make these values 0. Perfect. And then there is one last thing. We need to be sure that we are resolving the force in the coordinate system of the world. You can see what happens if you change these values. But for the moment, just keep it as world. Okay, so if I'm not forgetting anything, we can validate. And again, simulate. We have again our ball, and now we can play. As you can see, the ball starts bouncing back just a little bit and eventually remains resting on what would be the surface. But not exactly at zero, it's at a distance equal to its radius. There is other ways of modeling, but this is a very simple way of modeling contact. And as you can see, we don't need to write any equations. We can do it just by using Modelica components. Thank you so much for watching and see you in future videos.